so good morning and welcome to all the participants for this our uh, course the next session and uh, our today's resource person is uh, dr munmun mondal ji i humbly welcome to her here and thank you, before, thank you so much. Yes, most welcome most welcome before uh, starting the session i want to introduce about her uh, dr munmun mondal ji is an assistant professor in department of history school of humanities in lovely professional university punjab this university which is an one of the uh, we can say the maximum students uh, were studied are there so before joining university she has worked uh, as a museum curator dr mondal did her phd in archaeology in 2013 from university of calcutta with fellowship of indian council of historical research and post doctoral in 2016 in archaeology with the fellowship of uh, 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 Indian Council of Social Science and Research, New Delhi. She was the Charles Walls India Trust Fellow in British Museum, Victoria and Albert Museum, United Kingdom, and Bodleian Library, uh, Oxford, UK. She is a co-author of books and published uh, more than fifteen uh, research papers in reputed journals and books. She has presented many research papers in international seminars in Ireland, Sweden, United Kingdom, Prague, Jordan, Vienna, and Sri Lanka. and in national seminars in different parts of india dr mondal ji is a field archaeologist museum and heritage personnel and worked for more than 13 years in the field of archaeology excavation exploration and research her core area of interest and expertise is in art archaeology museum heritage exploration exhibition setup and collection management so dr munmun mondal was one of the selected participants in workshop on museum curation in august 2020 which was organized by the center for art and archaeology of the american institute of indian studies supported by us mission to india uh, new delhi under strengthening us india professional collaboration program as a convener and coordinator she has organized different workshops webinars and educational activities as a part of her professional career and still doing so and uh, as per my own experience just i want to say that she is an most energetic uh, scholar bahut baar aisa hota hai hum logon ko invite karte hain aur wo bolte hai ki hamare paas time hi nahi hai magar kuch log aise hote hai ki hamare paas agar thoda bhi samay hai to hum wo students ke liye new generation ke, ke liye dena chahte hai so she is one of them and i humbly welcome to again dr munmun mondal ji and i request her to start our today session most welcome okay thank you thank you so much for your kind words and uh, it's very enlightening for me also to join this kind of courses i mean we are dealing with the students so this is our basic primary i think duty to enhance their knowledge so far we are having though we we are having very limited knowledge as at this phase of life so with course of time let's see okay so so with that i think i will start my presentation am i visible i mean my presentation is visible yes ma'am okay thank you thank you so much so i am going to start today's topic that is folk and tribal culture i think you people have completed the earlier part uh, dealing with cultural heritage so i am just quickly moving with the cultural heritage culture heritage and then i am moving to the folk and tribal culture uh, ma'am sorry to interrupt yeah. but can you go in the presentation mode please uh, niche jahan pe slider hai 66% with the slide just a minute नीचे नीचे द बॉटम राइट कॉर्नर स्लाइडर के स्लाइडर के लेफ्ट साइड पे जो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट बटन है स्लाइडर के लेफ्ट या 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 और इस साइड या दिस वन थैंक यू मैम सो 
I am moving from uh, culture, then heritage, then folk and uh, tribal culture, because folk and tribal, when we are dealing with that, that is very much intangible in nature. So you people are having the idea of tangible and intangible, I think. So I'm, sta I'm, I'm starting from there, actually. The word culture, that basically coming from the Latin word cultura, that means the cultivation or growing. In, in very common word, we can say what we are having in and around, forming by us, that is a part of culture. And culture is basically the expression of our nature in our modes of living and thinking. That is why our surroundings matters to us. When we are staying in a place, the way we are living our life, the way we are thinking, that is very much interrelated, they are very much interconnected, basically. So it should be seen in our literature, in our non-secular practices, in our recreation, in our delight, everywhere. And our culture is very much, very much uh, having a strong impact in our everyday life. So humans from the very ancient part, even we can see from the prehistoric part also, their culture is something different. When the human evolution started, the culture started developing in different way. In prehistoric time, we are having different culture. In a, a protohistoric period, we are having different culture. Protohistoric, that is referring to the basically in the civilization period. And then when early history, then we are coming to the Vedic age, then we are formation of 16 Mahajanapada. Then the entire early ancient Indian history, ancient, not Indian history, I will say rather in ancient history as well as medieval modern the cultural evolution has taken place and what we can see today that is the most most uh, what i will say is the most uh, latest reflection of our culture in and around so culture is a form of communication and it evolves with course of time and as a type of compass it leads so culture is used to express identity for both individuals as well as groups now, when we are talking about cultural heritage, cultural heritage, that is something more wider. is an expression, the way of living developed by a community and passed on from generation to generation, including customs, practices, places, objects, artistic expressions, and all values. So the cultural heritage has a very much potential to promote access to and enjoyment to the cultural diversity. So if we go through the cultural heritage mainly we can having three kind three types of culture in and around that is tangible one is intangible and the last one is natural heritage so when we are talking about tangible heritage tangible that we can see we can touch we can feel like buildings monuments landscape books uh, artistic works artifacts antiquities collection of museums all are very much tangible but when we are talking about intangible, today's topic that is folk art, um, tribal art, tribal culture, folk culture, all these are very much intangible that we can feel, we can see, but we cannot touch. So that is a very much, uh, I mean, di strong difference between tangible and intangible culture. And when we are dealing with the natural heritage, that is very much associated with landscape, with the biodiversity, and all these, these three are very much interrelated in, in, in different ways. And we are leading our life with these three different categories of culture. Now, when I am moving to the classification, more broad categories of culture, then we are having three kinds of, three types of different divisions or categories. One is manifests, that is ideas or beliefs. One is artifacts technology, goods, objects, and social factors that is very much interrelated to the social organization. So culture is very much associated with festival, food, architecture, uh, technology, social uh, beliefs, ideas, everything. And these are very much intangible in nature. In Today, what we are going to discuss, very much intangible in nature. So here I am going to start with the folk culture. So, am I properly audible? I forgot to ask. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. The screen is not. Okay. The screen yeah, is we not. Can see we can see it. Uh, Dr. Bobade, yeah. is it visible? My screen yes, yes. Is... Okay. yes, yes, it's visible. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so all the cultures, as I have mentioned, have underlying beliefs and thought process. And when we, we deal with these beliefs, that include religion, that includes language, customs, prejudices, and all these beliefs, that are expressed in different way. Because all the beliefs that, that must have some kind of expression, OK, through various avenues. Now, what are the avenues? Now we are going to deal with that. So first I am going to discuss about the folk culture and folk culture when we are talking about folk culture, I think all the Indian states are having their own folk culture, folk dance, folk song, folk culture and all culture. When I am talking about culture, culture is very much associated with these things. So first of all, when we define folk culture, it is very much local, regional, small and very much tightly bound to the immediate landscape where those people are staying that is the very much immediate landscape of those people and when we talk about the popular culture that is quite vast that is quite large that is dispersed that is to some extent we can say globalized when we talk about the popular culture we talk about the, about the culture of um, different parts of USA, different European cities, different African cities. So that is popular culture. It's quite globalized one. It's quite vast one. But when we talk about folk culture, folk culture is very, very uh, local, very, 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 very composed and very, very regional. OK, so these two forms of culture are not totally separated. They are also very much interrelated. That is why I am talking about this from the very beginning that that, that this culture, this uh, artistic expression, landscape, everything is very much interrelated. When the culture is forming, that is definitely from by the people and definitely in some landscape. Without landscape, people cannot survive. And if people are not there, culture cannot form. So they are very much interrelated with each other. And if we see, today we are going um, to talk about the folk culture mainly about India, but when we see about the prehistoric time, the megalithic culture. The megalithic culture basically it flourished mostly, mostly in southern India, but then it spread in the northern India also. There are so many megalithic sites in and around Indian as well as uh, across the globe. But when you see the car, why is megalithic culture? I mean, the way they have developed, landscape played a very, very important role. So this culture, megalithic culture, Harappan culture, prehistoric culture, present, I mean, contemporary culture, folk culture, popular culture, all are very much interrelated with landscape. And this culture, as I have mentioned, they are very much, ha very much uh, having. Can you please say uh, which slide number is going on there? Because we can see only the second number slide here. Oh, I mm -hmm. am moving to number nine. Oh, oh, sorry for that. Yes, now we can see it nine. Yeah, okay. Yes, okay, please continue. Is it visible properly now? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. So, yeah, I have just crossed that. Now I'm moving to nine. Yeah. So, the now I have mentioned eight uh, such elements, but this is not only limited to these eight elements. Okay like food, shelter, relationship with family and others, education, political, social organizations, religion, language, security, protection, creative expression, all these are very much integral part of culture of any place. And I'm just giving one example. When we talk about, about, about the culture of Assam, when we talk about the culture of Gujarat, when we talk about the culture of Bengal, they are very much different to some extent. Why? Because their, their, their landscape is very much different. Their food habit is very much different. Social organization is very much different. Language. So all these matters when we talk about the regional culture. I have moved to slide number 10. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. OK. Yeah. So when we talk about the definition, I think I have already covered. When we talk about the folk culture, these traits such as dresses, dwellings, traditions, institutions, all these, I mean, usually small traditional communities, they are playing the most important part. And Indian folk culture is very much characterized by the simplicity. In India, the folk culture we are having, that is very simple. Definitely, that is very simple. But at the same time, I have to mention, 
if we go across the globe i mean discuss across the globe all the folk cultures probably are having very very simple character because folk is very much associated with the local regional community and this community is are not so developed okay not so 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 techno server so that is why the simplicity still they are trying to maintain from generation after generation and these are very much indigenous in nature in this, this uh, folk culture that is indigenous culture is i mean many way the basic of the folk culture this indigenous yes please say yeah no, again sorry, video. So, oh i can't move to the next slide yeah okay yeah we can okay. see now i'm talking about the folk culture i have given this in bullet form so that it will be very easier for you to understand when when we are talking about the customs when we are talking about the small region because i have already said this folk culture is always talking about the very small indigenous regional character so there we can say we are mostly having rural community and when we are talking about the communities they are very much isolated groups that have a very long lasting cultural traits that is coming after generation after generation they are bearing with that and the isolation the lack of interaction with the with the outer world that is very much unique form of this culture okay and mostly this usually spreads through relocation or diffusion so now i am moving to the aspects of the folk culture how it, it it is impacting our life it is very much traditional in nature practiced by small group uh, they are basically very old fashioned to some extent and they are having very simple lifestyle and when we talk about their cultures one thing we can see very very visibly that they are largely self sufficient these communities these four communities they are very very self sufficient okay this tradition comes first change i mean infrequently slowly but they are very religious and generally community rituals plays the most important part they are why they are self sufficient because they doesn't have any such strong interaction with the outer world so they have made them themselves very self sufficient in every possible way i'm <laughs> sorry Sorry. now i am moving to the different folk dances the dance songs paintings these are the integral part of the folk culture and when we talk about the different forms of folk culture uh, that is material and non material both can be there when we talk about the material culture that includes all objects made by members of that particular community or particular cultural groups but when we talk about the non material culture mostly folk tales folk lords folk paintings folk songs folk dance all these are dialects religious activities belief traditions uh, taboos all these are very much non material culture when we talk about that so first i am going to start with the folklore just give me one minute <coughs> sorry sorry so we will start from the folklore because folklore is probably the most common thing uh, since childhood we are we are we are accustomed with this i think folklore panchatantra hitapadesh the jataka stories what is folklore folklore is a very 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 important part in handling down the social norms because it is coming down from generation after generation and the information that is passing from one generation to another generation in a very strong way the most common part is the storytelling folklore is kind of storytelling and that is coming from generation to generation and with the stories definitely there are some kind of hitopadesha there are some kind of good learnings 
and this is having a tremendous impact on the generation and the i mean present generation and it is a very particular popular customs and practices in addition to the systems of belief uh, this panchagantra i have already mentioned jataka stories jataka stories um, i think uh, most of us are very much accustomed with since our childhood jataka story that is dealing with the earlier birth of buddha gautam buddha now i am moving to the folk art when we talk about the folk art it basically this this play an essential role in the timely reform and the setting up of these customs and practices distinctive religious orders convictions okay and they are very much pictorial expressions of the village painters those village painters are very much local indigenous in nature they are not very much exposed to europe america so called outer world they The, most of the time these painters have not seen the outer world even other parts of indian subcontinent they are very much regional the gond painters when i was working in madhya pradesh the gond painter i have made with they have they have never gone out side madhya pradesh you know so these painters are very much local localized people people and these painters we uh, paint painters which are marked by the subject chosen from the epic ramayana mahabharata mostly mythological stories okay sorry oh, when they are when we are talking about the folk painting folk painting is the most um, commonest way to 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 speak their local language through painting okay and uh, we can see that our daily life uh, flora fauna in and around is very much reflected in this folk painting the first folk painting that is the most common was that is madhubani painting madhubani is very madhubani is the place in bihar that is uh, very famous for its painting and madhubani painting is one of the most popular painting i think at present day in the glo- international um, way because madhubani painting has has earned that recognition in another in across the globe but the most important part of madhubani painting is it is a linear drawing painting when we talk about the madhubani painting the folk artist they always prefer the linear drawing okay mostly the mythological stories ramayana mahabharata uh, then, uh, then then radha krishna different gods and goddesses goddesses they are depicted in the canvas with different very very vibrating colors then i am moving to the patachitra patachitra it is also famous in orissa as well as it is famous in uh, bengal before moving to bengal i am going to discuss about the orishan potochitra because uh, orishan potochitra why i am discussing this two different potochitra because this is the clear reflection of the regional art here you can see the uh, jagannath balaram and sushubhadra see and this is uh, kaliyadaman kaliyadaman of sri krishna okay uh, krishna is standing on uh, the snake goddess so this is very common type of potter painting in orissa where jagannath balaram and subhadra that is jagannath temple is there that at the very prime religion aspect okay so the potter chitra of orissa is very much influenced by this theme but when we are moving to the bengal potter chitra this is bengal pot okay i have skipped two three slides i will go back i just i am just trying i mean mystically i have placed this slide little later but i will go back to the earlier slides later once i complete this part so we, this is bengal potter chitra see the difference of bengal potter chitra this is bengal potters bengal potters can be two types kaligat painting and scroll painting what is kaligat painting kaligat painting is mostly rectangular when we are talking about the orishan potter chitra that is always rectangular hardly it is circular but bengal painting kaligat painting is never circular mostly it is rectangular but the basic difference is the theme see bengal painting is very much pot- uh, folk painting that is potter chitra painting is very much influenced by the definitely mythological stories but their stories are something different from the orish from the orishan potter chitra so this is the regional differentiation okay i'm just discussing so that you people can get the basic idea about the regionalized regionalization in the folk painting 
folk art and folk culture and now i am moving to the audition part of painting again then i will discuss this later in a more vivid way so here in the audition part of painting jagannath balaram and subhadra you can see here see this is also a line drawing like madhubani but you can understand very much visible from this picture the difference between this painting this is krishna krishna when we when we talk about krishna this is krishna is always blue in color see his body is blue but at the same time how colorful vibrant in vibrant way it has been depicted but this is there is i mean in audition photo chitra i mean not so vibrant color have been used mostly the outline is very rich red yellow ochre white black these are the most primary colors but here you can see use a multi color and more vibrancy in the color but in orishan potachitra that is little bit to some extent blurred from that side when we move, move toward the pithora painting pithora it is also a very much popular one okay basically this paintings of rathvas and vilala tribes of gujarat it is more than ritual than the art form but when we talk about the potachitra orisha potachitra madhubani that is very much art form okay like kalamkari kalamkari when we talk about kalamkari kalam means pen why the term came because first the line drawing is made by kalam with pen then in the basically initial the days in the ancient time after the drawing with pen that was filled with the color and that colors they were also not so vibrant in nature okay so kalamkari when we are talking about it is from andhra pradesh this kalamkari painting it is very popular in the krishna krishna district basically it is very much hand painting definitely i will mention that madhubani is hand painting pithora is hand painting all are hand painting but here you can see the first line drawing is made by the pen or kalam that is why the kalamkari term came now this is i think very much common popular uh, floor paintings mostly it is having regional names in different parts of india like uttar pradesh it is known as aipan in uttarakhand uh, sorry aipan in uttarakhand and mandana in rajasthan andhra pradesh this kind of floor painting is known as a mugula and in bengal it is known as alpana in tamil nadu it is known as kolla so it is having different regional names but the very very basic thing is it is also a regional folk art and you can see different kind of depiction in this floor paintings in different region the mm, floor paintings of maharashtra that is to some extent different from the floor paintings of andhra pradesh tamil nadu bengal so the regional variation is very much prominent here when we talk about worldly art worldly art that is also very famous from maharashtra i i think there is nothing new in worldly art the most common part th this is also a tribal uh, tribal art. this is also a tribal art and it is also depicting the social cultural life of the groups of the people here in worldly art one thing is very important no particular specific uh, gods or goddesses are not there it is mostly the social and cultural landscape and life of the people most of the time we can see that i mean the more popular in popular way see it's a brush and a mixture of the rice paste in a water gum uh is used see mostly the depiction is in social same but when we are moving about thanka thanka is also kind of folk painting but it is mostly tibetan in character so in this art images of buddha paint buddha is prioritized why in thanka buddha because it is very much religion and it is not the social one so we can understand that folk paintings are also very much influenced by the social as well as really re religious aspect and when we talk about the thanka painting it is categorized into three types one is tibetan tibetan buddhist wall painting here you can see mostly they are painting this kind of tibetan thanka their walls the <clears throat> glimpses of buddha's lifestyle and rituals and practices and as well as daily life so different variations are there kaligat painting i have very quickly i have uh, talked about 
now i am moving to the scroll painting here i am just narrating a incident a event basically more precisely that uh, will give you a common idea about the mythological as well as the religious impact of of the region that is bengal when we talk about the scroll painting of bengal we can see see this is 5 to 6 feet long scroll paintings Okay, here one very very common uh, mythical story that is Mangal Kabbo that has been depicted. What is Mangal Kabbo? Basically, in 18th century, eight, sorry, uh, composed more more or less between 13th to 18th century. <laughs> this Mangal Kabbo played a very important role in the life of Bengalis. Why the entire social scenario was depicted there? It was a very 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 close knit story. And the story is very interesting. And the entire story has been depicted here. And you will be surprised, Victoria and Albert Museum, uh, they are having the largest collection of the Bengal painting, the scroll painting in their collection, more than 6,000. India doesn't have that much of collection. When I was working in the Victoria Albert Museum, I was very surprised to see um, no, I have not added that picture. Uh, I, have, I was very surprised to see how beautifully they have preserved. I am not telling that we are not preserving that in a beautiful manner. Yeah, we are definitely preserving that. But Victoria Albert is having almost 6,000 uh, Bengal painting. OK, and this, this, this uh, depiction of Bengal painting here, Mongol Kabbo has been depicted. What is the story of the Mongol Kabbo? I am just giving you a few points. It's very interesting. Uh, it is basically related to the snake goddess. She was known as Manasha. So Manasha was very much positive about a person. I mean, a devotee. His name was Chant Sadagar. Chant Sadagar was a very, very uh, popular and very, very heavyweight businessman during that time. And Chant Sadagar was basically a follower of Shiva, Saiva cult. But Manusha cult, that is snake goddess, she is a female deity. She wants the, 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 basically she wants to be worshipped by Chant Sadagar rather than other person. So uh, Manusha tried to convince Chant Sadagar, but, but when Chant Sadagar was very adamant, during the day of the marriage of Lakshminder and Behula, the son of Chant Sadagar, Manusha uh, entered as a form of snake into their bridal chamber, okay, biting of Chant Sadagar, sorry, Lakshminder in a by black snake. Here you can see, and then the lamentation scene. Okay, I will narrate it in a more particular way. Here you can see the Behula is seen sailing an improvised boat with the corpse to heaven. When Lakshmindar was bitten by the chant, uh, snake god Manasha, then his wife Behula carried him to heaven. This is the waterway. She is carrying the body of, his, of her husband to heaven. Okay. Now, in course of her voyage, she is seen meeting with Neta. So many people are meeting during the course. And ultimately, she mates with Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, who have who gave who gave back the life of Lakshminder and the other sons of Chanchadagar. Here, Brahma, Brahma is having three heads. You can see they here. Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar. And here you can see Chanchadagar with his body. Behula met him. I mean, met with Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar. And ultimately, Chanchadagar got his life back. And when Behula with his with her husband and other uh, cousins came back. Chant Shadagaru were compelled to worship Manasha, the deity of snake. But as he was the follower of Shiva, he worshipped the female goddess with her with uh, his left hand, not right hand, because he used to think his right hand will always be dedicated with Shiva, not for any female goddess. So why I am narrating? Because through this folk art, the authority of the female goddess in 18th century Bengal was established. So we can understand folk art plays a very crucial role 
in, in, in the social and cultural scenario. Okay, so now I'm moving to the folk dances, statewide folk dance. I have given a chart here. Um, the regional folk dance in Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, all the states are having their own different folk dance. Okay. I'm not going to discuss that elaborately. We don't have much time left. Now I am moving to the folk music. Folk music, we are we are having different folk music like Bihu in Assam, Baul in Bengal, Lavani in Maharashtra. So different, this practice of different folk dance, folk um, songs, these are very much, um, very much, very much strong aspect of the uh, folk art because I have already mentioned they are very much internally, internally connected. And when we talk about the different traits of folk culture. Nowadays, we can see the different traits of folk culture. These traits are very much in danger. The first one I will I will discuss that is the loss of the traditional values because now the different um, components are adding their glitter with the folk culture. So the traditional uh, way of performing the folk art is, is slowly diminishing and that is really a threat. Foreign uh, media, Interaction is the change of culture. The cultural change is very much strong. So in this scenario, it is very difficult to 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 maintain the to maintain the ancient roots is really challenging. And when we talk about the environmental threats, that is also a very important role, playing a very important role. Now I am moving to the tribal culture as I have almost completed the folk culture. When we talk about the tribal culture, tribal culture is something different from the folk culture. Tribe is a social division in a traditional society consisting of families linked by social, economic, religious, or blood ties with a common culture and dialect. This is very important. Different historians have given different definition of the tribal culture, tribes basically. Basically in our Indian constitution, they have been termed as a scheduled tribe or tribe, okay? So in the, uh, uh, to the ordinary man, the word suggests simple folk uh, living in the hills or forest. To people who are a little better informed, it signifies a very colorful people famous for their dance, songs, and to an administrator, it means a group of citizens who are special responsibilities to the president of India. And as an anthropologist, it indicates a special field for the study of the social phenomena. So these tribes have been interpreted in different way. In our constitution also, we are having special part for these tribes, that is scheduled caste. OK, so I have already mentioned different historians have been described, described in different way, like Dian Majumda, Gelin and Gelin, Perry. So I'm not going into the tribals. They are mostly known as the Adivashis, who were the original inhabitants of lands and the, the life too close to the forest. And here in India, we are having different tribes. I have just mentioned in Indian constitution, we are having in 2019, it was a the schedule five basically of the constitution and they these tribes have been recognized by the constitution as a schedule tribes there are 645 distinct tribes in india the second amendment bill in 2009 the constitution it it has mentioned as a schedule tribes now what are the major tribes in india in different just i have mentioned just like uh, in different states i have mentioned different songs different dance here also different tribes are there in different states like on the Pradesh, we are having Bhil, Gond, these tribes are there. In Arunachal Pradesh, that is very striking in the northeastern part of Indian continent. I think still the tribal practice is very strong. I'm not saying that other parts doesn't have. Definitely they are having, but northeastern states like Assam, Manipur, Mizoram, Meghala, they are having very strong tribal culture still now. And it, it, in the other parts, definitely in Chhattisgarh, in Bihar, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir, they are also having different kinds of tribal culture. Here I have given the uh, graphic representation. You can see almost this entire part is having very strong tribes in India. I have given a list here like Meghalaya, they are having Garus in Mizoram, they are having Chagmas 
in nagaland they are also having garos because these garos are having different orientation and regional vari variation odisha we are having rajasthan sikkim tamil nadu in up west bengal assam andaman and nicobar tripura andaman still they are very much un untouched people i mean they are far away from the developed countries developing culture so if we see the regional variation the regional distribution the most important part that scheduled tribes in india form the largest portion of the total population in lakshadweep and mizoram followed by nagaland and meghalaya that is why i have said the northeastern part of india is having very strong um, tribal um, population okay and after this madhya pradesh is the largest is having the largest number of scheduled tribes after orissa and bastar area of chatrishgarh that consists of the large number of scheduled tribes and after that we can see different states are having but punjab delhi chandigarh pondicherry and haryana there are no strong scheduled tribes in india okay and when we talk about the distinctive character of these tribes the, the common topography the most important part is common definite common topography tribal people they live within a very definite topography and it is common place for all the members of a particular tribe occupying the region then the sense of unity the tribal people this community they are having very strong sense of unity they are very very particular about their community they are not at all open to the at all open to accept any other regional attributes the sense of unity is invariable necessity for a true tribal life and the very existence of this of a tribe depends upon the tribal's sense of unity during the times of peace and war the third character is indigenous uh, indigenous group so the tribal people they generally don't marry outside the specific tribe and the marriage within the tribe is highly appreciated and much applauded okay then the common dialect then ties a blood relationship ties sorry i have repeatedly written it a common culture and the importance of kingship we can see most of the tribal organizations tribal communities are having kingship still now and when we talk about the the religion tribes believe in certain myths taboos and that is very much associated with the regional culture okay they, they basically they believe in the totems signifying objects having mystic relationship with members of the tribe geographical isolation or semi isolation plays a very important role uh, a role in this regard why because all these are i have already mentioned all these are very much interrelated and this this kind of isolation have given the 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 what i will say that isolation has given them the feelings to keep them in united in war and peace that is also a very important part of them i have given i have discussed here some of the very important tribes of india different parts of india like bagada tribe this is very i mean rare tribe nowadays in odisha and andhra pradesh bagada it is one of the aboriginal tribes and no evidence can define precisely the origin of bagada as per the archaeological survey of india record okay they are very, basically nowadays they're shrinking in population density uh, in last 30 or 40 years their percentages have been decreased i mean very very strikingly bagada that that comes from the word bagtas that refer the devoted warriors which is coming from their loyalty towards the previous leader of the land and bagada is one of the cultural inheritors of the indo aryan tradition of the ancient india so with this tribe we are moving to the costumes very quickly we don't have much time i think just a minute you can you can talk up to 11:15 uh, sorry 12:15 so okay 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 12:15 no then it's fine okay yeah. when you talk about the costumes it is very surprising that customs are also are having regional variation so when we are talking about the folk culture when we are talking about the tribal culture we can see regional variation is playing so so important part in this regard 
regional variation, their landscape, their culture, all integral part are interrelated, but they are different. They are interrelated, but they are very much different in nature. When we are talking about customs, Garo Khasi Jaintia, I have started with the Meghalaya because in northeastern, basically, I am very much inclined to the eastern, northeastern part of India because when I, I was working there, I have seen the tribal culture is extremely rich there, extremely rich, especially the Garo the Khasi. Same, the, same, the same costume till today? Same yes, costume. yes, yes, yes. It's very striking. During the religious festival, during the marriage ceremony, they invariably they will wear the same costume. It's very, very, I mean, really beautiful. And these jewelries, these are all handmade, this kind of, both male and female, both are wearing these jewelries. And these, this, this kind of skirt, I mean, this kind of cloth they are wearing, they are hand woven. They're extremely expensive, but they mostly they are not selling outside. I mean, when uh, I was uh, working there, uh, they have given me one. It's really expensive. This small uh, dress, it is costing around 3000 to 4000 Okay, so it is very, very beautiful, really hand over and still now this weaving process is going on. It's really striking. So these clothes worn by the Garu tribe, they vary on the basis of the place of residence of the people. Especially they are wearing this kind of dresses, this kind of costumes mostly in the marriage ceremonies in the religious festivals and women who belong to far away groups of the garo hills wear this eking which is a small cloth worn around the waist this pinkish one now the women belong to this tribe wear a blouse along with a handmade lungi called dhagmanda which is wrapped around the waist and Garo women who stay either highly populated or crowded places wear long dresses which are made up of cotton. This Dhagmanda poses broad borders around 6 to 10 inches thick with a floral pattern adorned on them. Why I have mentioned because I have liked this kind of textiles that is absolutely handmade, not only handmade. The regional character is so, so significant here. But once you Cross Meghala, you will not get this kind of uh, handicraft. Okay, and here the hairdress, headgear you can see here. This is handmade, this white one. This is absolutely handmade. These necklaces, these are handmade. And men are also wearing with this kind of necklaces. Not only women, men, they are also wearing. Now I am moving to Khasi. See, Garo, Khasi, all are very much common tribes, but how their costumes are different from each other. When we are talking about Khasis, women belonging to the tribe of Khasi, they were Jansi, along with the blouse. This, this yellow is this one. This is yellow, but it is not only yellow, different colors, variations are there. And then this is known as Jansi. Okay, with the blouse they are wearing it, and this Jansi covers their body right from the waist down till the ankles. And during Kasad Suk, my son, this is, it is a festival of that place. Female dancers wear a cloth which is draped right from the waist up to the ankle. And this is owned with a blouse having full sleeves, beautiful lace work around it. This kind of lace work, this is really encouraging. This is typical Ghasi tribes one. This is a festival, you can see. Most of the time, they are having the yellow one with the red blouse. But I have seen some bluish, sky blue, some, some kind of color were also there. But for the religious purpose, they are mostly wearing the yellow one. Now I am moving the giant here. See, you can see, I mean, it is visible. You can see the difference in their costumes. Women belonging to this tribe has a traditional style of four clothes in comparison to the other tribe. This is, I mean, long sarong known as the Tho Khaya. So this is very famous in the Jayantia tribe. The men and women belonging to this tribe dress up with these costumes, and this is very famous. Now I am moving to the jewelry part. The jewelry, why I am mentioning when we are talking about the tribal culture, I think jewelry is the integral part of the tribes. Without jewelry, they cannot sustain. They love jewelry. You can't believe when I have seen them in morning, just after, I mean, they're coming up with the out of the bed. 
they are just wearing the jewelry in the morning and full day they will carry the jewelry with them without jewelry they cannot sustain even not a single day they are very passionate about jewelry and their jewelry is something very very different from what we were i am wearing this necklace but they can't think of it when i was working there some people asked me how you can wear this type of uh, 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 necklace these are very 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 simple one their jewelries are most of the time quite heavy and one striking part is their jewelries is having some kind of symbolic representation of the ancestors here you can see five head face basically see this is made of metal this is the typical representation of their ancestors that is why he is wearing that here you can see the circular design this is also very much associated with their ancestors so this tribal jewelry communities a lot about the wearer status in the group the tribals who are having very high status their jewelry is something different that is very expensive they all are handmade i again i will mention the clothes the jewelry they are wearing mostly they are handmade and i mean those people who are very i mean having high financial status they are wearing this kind of an expensive part the local people the common people the normal person i mean not so rich people they are also wearing the jewelry but they are jewelry symbolizing some kind of financial strain but in a minimal way they are wearing it but they are wearing it the difference between these two when the, the, the they are financially very strong they are wearing very high profile jewelry tribal jewelry okay and it is also depending on their functions on their religious beliefs as well as different events even in the olden eras there were ornaments to pretty fit every significant part of the body they are not only wearing jewelry earrings or anklets or necklaces or tiaras they are having jewelry for each and every part of their body and this tribal jewelry that integrates humble natural materials that is why i am trying to make you understand that these all are handmade and they are selecting the raw material from the nature leaves feathers claws flowers ivory Uh, claws all these are the very basic metal these are the very basic mm -hmm. resource source material of their uh, jewel making of jewelry and the demographic uh, demography of the region availability of the resource and the proposed functionality are some of the very important factors that make tribal jewelry of one group differ from the other group that is why i am telling you the way i have mentioned khashi garu join the their costumes are different their jewelries are also very very different from each other like see the anklets the ex even extreme poverty i have already mentioned those people who are very common people those people who are having very very strong financial crisis i mean lack of precious metal have not i mean deterred the tribal crafts from creating glorious ornaments still they are having the jewelry in their own way here you can see how rich their anklets is you see in nowadays it is costing 20 to 25000 this this anklet one anklet is costing 20 to 25000 it is made of metal not of silver mixed metal alloy metal basically and in fact it has been observed that this tribes of the certain region may have scantily clothed but do you still add on but they still add on their body with heavy jewelry they are wearing very very scanty clothes but heavy jewelry that is still in practice like in madhya pradesh we can see the tribes of bastar uh, the use of grass natural beads and cane that makes their jewelry so see they, they, they are collecting from the uh, in and around environment natural resources okay because the common people doesn't have so much money to invest on their jewelry the tribes so they are collecting from the natural resources okay and most of the residents of the bastar district still prefer to add on traditional ornaments made of 
peacock feathers wild flowers wood and some glass silver copper in rajasthan the banjara tribes we can see banjara tribes they adorn their own belts around their waist to complement their vibrant attires okay mostly in rajasthan we can see coins shells beads metallic mace these are very common you can see in rajasthan they are using coins different kinds of coins in their necklace this banjara tribes like this in arunachal pradesh you can see the variation karakalam tribes they are very famous for their uh, for the traditional um, jewelry the women of this group they adorn the crafted coils of iron you can see coils of iron rings as earring okay to complement their metal embossed leather bands bands are leather but they are using iron coils for their earring and their uh, i mean adornments are heavily studded with beads in arunachal pradesh i have seen not only arunachal meghalaya mizoram also use of beads are very very important and there are different taboos tear of different totems with associated with this okay in uh, Reng rengami tribes you can see men are belonging to these tribes they wear jewels made of flowers and their ears and red blossoms are the most popular among them so they are collecting from their in and out environment then i am moving to the himachal pradesh tribe in himachal pradesh also different chamba kangra mandi kulu we can see how beautifully they are adorning their body with different collar like silver hasa hand sleeves and silver chokers different celtic field silver bangles commonly worn by the pahari women of himachal pradesh okay and one thing i i will uh, definitely mention i have mentioned the word i mean different taboos totems are there but on the other side they are trying they are wearing this kind of jewelry to to keep them away from the evil spirit that is also a very very important but i forgot to mention that these jewelries are also playing a important part in their in their belief in their taboos in their totems they believe that they if they are wearing this kind of jewelry evil spirits cannot touch them this is from bihar santal areas not only bihar in the southwestern part of west bengal also we can see these jhumkis are very popular all, all over the world basically then i will move to the tribal uh, traditions costumes despite the technological developments humans have made their over the centuries there are some sections of the society who still prefer to live in their own way or with old customs tradition it is not that they are not aware of how easy their technology has made human life but instead they just choose to be very simple they just choose to be not so developed and they choose to be very much categorical very much very much very much specific to their old tradition and culture and customs they want to continue the older customs in their own way traditionally as it is coming up they are having all possibilities to embrace the new developed culture but they are not inclined to that and that is the biggest part and i think that is the most fundamental part of tribes that has kept them going okay the jarwas vandaman nikobar they are pretty wide when it comes to the food they relish fish pigs and other animals but own touch a deer why because deer is sacred to them they worship deer okay so these are very very i mean this always plays a very important part in their traditional life so now i have almost reached to the conclusion tribal communities they have their own culture they have their own lifestyle and india is having worst tribal communities worst population okay mostly they are uh, dependent on agriculture and for resources for their livelihood but this is very i mean i mean what i will say this is very painful that nowadays definitely the the there is different hindrances are there now technology is trying to grab their continuity of culture and tribal still they are trying i mean nowadays trying to continue their culture but in many parts 
of India tribals are quitting farming fast. The second household now survives on the manual labor in an informal economy. So people are moving from their culture due to lack of finance, due to lack of traditional aspect, and definitely support from the government. Okay, with that, I am going to conclude my presentation. Yes, thank you, thank you, thanks a lot. And uh, after uh, seeing this all uh, presentation, uh, just I want to say a few words. Uh, when we can see such uh, this beauty of the heritage of this uh, tribal and this folk arts and architecture and whatever be there, the culture. So, ये देखने के बाद हमारे दिमाग से अभी तक जो एक पिक्चर हमने बना के रखा है कि ट्राइबल और फोक माने तो वो लोग गरीब होते हैं या हमसे पिछड़े होते हैं बैकवर्ड्स होते हैं ये अपने दिमाग से कृपया हटा दीजिए क्योंकि उनकी दृष्टि में अगर हम देखें तो वी आर द बैकवर्ड्स हम लोग बैकवर्ड क्योंकि कल्चरल का जो रिचनेस है वो उसका डिफरेंस वेरिएशंस में भी है उसके साथ साथ नेचर के साथ आप जितने जुड़े हुए हैं उतना वो रिच माना जाता है दूसरी बात ऑर्नामेंट की अगर जिस यानी जो पैमाने हमने तय किए हैं हमने जिस तरह से उसको आ, देखते हैं कि कौन रिच है ऑर्नामेंट्स को देखेंगे तो उनके पास तो हमसे कितने तो भी बड़े बड़े गहने हैं दूसरी बात है अगर उनका कलरफुल कल्चर को अगर देखेंगे कॉस्ट्यूम्स को देखेंगे तो हमसे कितना तो भी बेस्ट कॉस्ट्यूम्स uh, उनके पास अवेलेबल है आज जो हम बॉलीवुड में हॉलीवुड में जो कॉस्ट्यूम देख रहे हैं वो कॉस्ट्यूम कब का उन्होंने यानी सदियों से वो लोग पहन रहे हैं इसकी बात एक और भी समझ लीजिए कि हमारा जो भी माइंडसेट हमने जो बना के रखा है नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया बट फॉरेनर्स भी जब हमारे देश में आए उन्होंने भारत का जो वर्णन किया तो उनकी किताबों में हमने देखा कुंभ मेला का वर्णन जो उन्होंने किया है या यहाँ के जो ट्राइब्स एंड फोक्स के बारे में उन्होंने जो वर्णन किया है इट्स अ टोटली रॉन्ग उन्होंने ऐसा बोला है कि इन अ रिच कंट्री देर आर दी पुअर पीपल्स सो एक श्रीमंत देश में जो है गरीब लोग रहते हैं मगर ये गरीबी उनका माइंडसेट गरीब है लोगों का नहीं है बिकॉज दे आर हैप्पी वो लोग खुश है अगर हैप्पीनेस इंडेक्स का अगर देखा जाए सो सो कॉल्ड जो हम uh, पांडर पेशी वन वर्ड विच इज यूज इन मराठी पांडर पेशी सिविलाइज सो कॉल्ड सिविलाइज पीपल से ज्यादा जो है दे आर दी मोस्ट हैप्पी पर्सन वो हमसे कई गुना ज्यादा खुश लोग हैं क्योंकि वो कुदरत के साथ जी रहे हैं और हार्मनी बिटवीन द ह्यूमन एंड हार्मनी बिटवीन द ह्यूमन एंड द नेचर इज वॉट द रियल हैप्पीनेस इज वॉट द रियल ट्रूथ तो वो उनके पास ज्यादा है तो हमारा माइंड हम चेंज करें और जब भी हम कभी फोक कल्चर के बारे में पढ़े ट्राइबल्स के बारे में पढ़े तब ये बात समझिएगा कि हम कुछ अलग दुनिया को समझने का प्रयास कर रहे हैं किसी बैकवर्ड बहुत पिछड़े हुए लोग हैं क्योंकि हमारे स्कूल डेज में या कॉलेज डेज में यही माना जाता था ट्राइबल्स वो पिछड़े लोग होते हैं मगर उनके बीच में रह के आइए पता चलेगा कि वो कितना रिच है बॉटम ऑफ द हार्ट दिल से भी वो लोग इतने रिच है so uh, humbly thankful to munmun ji and uh, now request to all the participants nikita ji yes. ne bhi ne haath upar kiya tha okay, okay. please yeah nikita ji and yes, all the participants uh, yeah please uh, yes ma'am ma'am i just have a yes, question yes. Uh, going through your slides there is a mention of folk music in that you just uh, explain about that uh, aspect that are the problematic for the folk music and one of the reason is the environmental threat so can you explain how the environmental uh, affect the folk music most of the time these people they are uh, they are getting the tunes from the surroundings nature folk music is having their own like bihu like uh, cho they are uh, i mean taking the entire musical conception from the nature from their own community okay but nowadays as there are so many deforestation uh, lack of uh, animals birds somehow they are affecting this kind of uh, 
in fact are very much there in their folk music folk music nowadays they are losing their popularity because that that is replaced by the the latest bollywood hollywood tollywood these kind of music so this folk music are really losing their own charm okay is it clear nikita ji or it's not till okay ma thank you thank you okay anyone having any question please ask yeah rashmi ji yes जो आपने कहा कि लाइक वो ट्राइबल पीपल दे विल बी स्कैंडली ड्रेस बट दे डोंट वेरी हैवी ज्वेलरी सो वॉट इज द हिस्टोरिक और लाइक वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस और वॉट इज द रीजन फॉर वेरिंग सच हैवी ज्वेलरी टू कवर द बॉडी सी फर्स्ट एंड फोर मोस्ट थिंग इज If we see the prehistoric people, I am just going back to the prehistoric time. The initial days, people don't have clothes. Okay, when clothes came, also they don't want to cover their body. They they will cover mostly with the first ornaments because that is making them beautiful. That is making them attractive. They are more inclined to the ornaments rather than the dresses, rather rather than the clothes. Okay, so okay. if they are wearing less cloth but heavy ornaments to cover up the body parts that they need and with the less dress with the minimum interference appearance and the second important thing is that this jewelry is not only a part of the uh, for the ornamentation only but uh, they uh, there is a some medicinal purpose also okay, okay. कान के अंदर ही जो बाली पहनते हैं या नाक के अंदर जहाँ पर स्पेसिफिक होल करके वहां जो पहना जाता है या कुछ समय में अलग अलग इसमें या ऑटो में पहनते हैं तो इसका मेडिसिनल पर्पज भी है है जब आप ये ज्वेलरी एंड मेडिकल इसके बारे में डॉक्टर बी रामा राव सिद्धा इंस्टीट्यूट केरला जो है उन्होंने इसके बारे में बहुत अच्छा आंटी भी लिखा है ऐसे ही कहीं भी गहने कितना वेट का वो होना है पैरों में अगर पहना है तो कितने वेट का होना है कमर में अगर कमर पट्टा पहना है मेंशन दिया तो उसका वेट कितना होना है ये सारी बातें स्पेसिफिक है और उसी के अनुसार वो तैयार भी की जाती है मेडिसिनल है आल्सो फ्रॉम द एविल स्पिरिट क्योंकि हम लोग आई मीन दे फील दैट इफ दे आर वेरिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ फिफ्टी ग्राम ऑफ नेकलेस फोर्टी ग्राम ऑफ इयर रिंग देन एविल स्पिरिट कैन नॉट टच देम दिस काइंड ऑफ टैबू टोटेम्स आर देर ऑल्सो दीपाली जी यस सर ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि कि मुखिया जी अलग ज्वेलरी पहन रहे हैं कॉमन पीपल या या या, या काम के वजह से वगैरह अलग पहन ऐसा भी रहता होगा ना अकॉर्डिंग टू स्टेटस मुखिया जी जो है ही इज हैविंग द हाई स्टेटस इन सोसाइटी सो डेफिनेटली हिज ज्वेलरीज हिज कॉस्ट्यूम्स इज ऑलवेज वेरी मच एक्सपेंसिव इन टर्म्स ऑफ मनी दे आर हैविंग सम काइंड ऑफ डिमरकेशन डेफिनेटली and the common people their necklace is different and the mukhya they are have their necklace their ornaments their jewelry is something different they are having more heavier one okay sir sir hum jab mandir vagra jaye jaate hain tab unke jo carvings rehte hain to jewelry ke iske wajah se hum unka social status andaaza laga sakte hain kya yeah definitely so yes. many researches are there Accord, I mean, based on the jewelry, we can stratify our society. How in the ancient text you were having the reference in the temple architecture, the depictions, even in terracotta, in stone, the way they have depicted the Gandharvas, the Apsharas, the Rajas, all the people. According to their jewelry, we can stratify our society. That is a very important part of history. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, sir. Sir, I would like to, I would like to say something. But nowadays, in our urban cities and uh, population, nowadays wearing less jewelry is considered to be very high standard. And uh, our traditional jewelry is going uh, like people are not opting for it. And nowadays, it's become a trend of wearing diamonds. Like because of marketing strategy, people like do, people don't wear gold or silver, but people are wearing diamonds. and minimal and we are aping the western culture in our jewelry also because we are getting urbanized na we are trying to i mean more developed 
बट डायमंड में कुछ नहीं होता है इंस्टेड ऑफ डायमंड सिल्वर इज मोर मोर फार फार बेटर यू नो वी आर कीपिंग अवर गोल्ड इन द लॉकर इन द बैंक ओके वी आर वेरिंग डायमंड बट देर इज नो वैल्यू इंस्टेड ऑफ दैट इफ वी कैन वेर द सिल्वर नेकलेस दैट इज हैविंग डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ बेनिफिशियल इफेक्ट ऑन आर सिल्वर इज वेरी वेरी गुड फॉर हेल्थ वेरी ट्रू And this say that जनरी काम में जो है रश्मि जी आपका पहला स्टेटमेंट जो है वो मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा दिन ब दिन हम जो है कम से कम पहनना ये हम अच्छा समझ रहे हैं ये बहुत अच्छी बात है वरना हम लोगों को तो बड़ी मुश्किल होती है ना स्पेशली द मैन ऑफ होम पुरुषों को सबसे ज्यादा पैसा उसी में ये करना पड़ता नहीं बिल्कुल आजकल ट्रेंड है कि नहीं हम लोग मतलब मिनिमल नहीं पहनना है लाइक टू मच पहने तो बोलते हैं कि क्या शो ऑफ कर रहे हैं लाइक एट लीस्ट नो वन नो सी वन मोर थिंग इज आवर लाइफ इज मोर एडवांस टुडे आज हम लोगों को स्कूल जाना है यूनिवर्सिटी जाना है कॉलेज जाना है यू कैन नॉट कैरी द थिंग्स अब सुबह उठ के नहा के इतना ऑर्नामेंट्स पहन के आप जा नहीं सकते हैं बहुत टाइम लग जाएगा सो आवर लाइफ हैज बिकम वेरी फास्ट उन लोगों का लाइफ इतना फास्ट नहीं है ट्राइबल्स का दे आर वेरी लीडिंग अ वेरी स्लो लाइफ सो दे आर हैविंग दैट टाइम बट वी डोंट हैव मच टाइम आल्सो That is also that, a part. That again, that again. Please be consider that it means not that uh, the slow life hai means. वो गलत है ऐसा नहीं है. It's नहीं, perfect. नहीं, it's okay. perfect. Yes, because their needs are also very less, and as per their needs, they live the better life. Exactly. हमारे needs के हिसाब से हमारी needs को fulfill करने के लिए ज़्यादा speedy life चाहते हैं. Exactly. अगर हम जाए कि तीन दिन एक ही टेबल पर एक ही चेयर पर बैठ के रहना है बैठ के रह सकेंगे क्या हम लोग नहीं यार उसके साथ सर ये भी है कि हम लोग को महीना में एक लाख रुपया चाहिए दे डोंट नीड सो मच मनी फॉर द लाइफ वी आर लिविंग डिफरेंट लाइफ दैट इज वाई वी आर लुकिंग फॉर मनी दैट इज वाई वी आर लिविंग दिस काइंड ऑफ लाइफ इन लोगों का ज्यादा रिक्वायरमेंट भी नहीं है सो दे आर वेरी पीसफुल लाइफ दे आर है They are slow, but their life is far better than उन लोगों का ज्यादा मेडिसिन का भी जरूरत नहीं होता है बीमारी भी ज्यादा नहीं है सो दे आर लाइफ इज मोर फार फार बेटर दोनों में ट्राइबल और फोक दोनों में जो है ये समय का भी अनुपालन जो है उनमें अगर देखेंगे स्पेशली द मैनोस्क्रिप्ट को अगर आप देखेंगे तो उसमें और उन केस में एक वो जिसको हम कहते हैं ना कि लोक कथाएं जिसको हम बोलते हैं तो एंड सॉन्ग्स ऑल्सो तो उनका जीवन कितना सुंदर है वो उनके वो सॉन्ग से और उनके फेस्टिवल से हमें पता चलता है यस रश्मि जी आपको कुछ कहना है सर हम लोग ज्वेलरी पहनते हैं पर आजकल तो वो डर से ही कि हम लोग लॉकर में रख देते हैं पहनने से ज्यादा हमारी लॉकर में रहती है बिकॉज वी हैव अ फियर कि कोई चोरी करेगा ये कहते लाइक दैट डजेंट मेक एनी इट डजेंट इवन हेल्प यू इन ब्यूटीफाइंग योर सेल्फ क्योंकि हम डर में ही रहते हैं हमेशा ज्वेलरी नॉट परचेस ओनली फॉर द वेरिंग बट इट्स लाइक एन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्ट के तौर पर ही हम देख रहे हैं बाकी कुछ दीपाली जी आपको कुछ कहना है जी आपको कुछ कहना है हेलो सर मुझे लगता है ट्राइबल लाइफ इज मोर हार्मोनियस हार्मोनियस विथ नेचर एंड सिंक्रोनाइज विथ नेचर सो नेचर का पेस उनके लाइफ में रहता है तो इट इज स्लो आज प्लान करें हम और कल फल नहीं मिलता है ना उसके लिए हमको कितना तो साल वेट करना पड़ता है मुझे लगता है वैसे उसके लिए उनका लाइफ स्लो है दे नेचर के साथ रहते हैं Yes, very true, very true. और मुंडल uh, मुंडल जी ने लास्ट में जो सेंटेंसेस कहे वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट थे नाउ बिकॉज ऑफ दिस वेस्टर्न सिविलाइजेशन की वजह से जो है हम लोग पाश्चात्यों का अंधानुकरण करने यानी uh, विकास की दौड़ इट्स एन पागल दौड़ उसको शब्द गांधी ने यूज किया है सो so, उसमें जो है सब कुछ उनका कल्चर को नष्ट करने में डिमोलिश करने में जो है एक कंपटीशन uh, सा लगा हुआ है पूरे दुनिया भर में जहां नहीं करने दिए वहां पर गोलियां चला करके जो है डेवलपमेंट का नाम यूज किया गया ओनली द वर्ल्ड इज देयर बट इट्स एंड रियली मैडनेस क्योंकि हमने जिस चीज को सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस देना चाहिए वो है हमारी थ्री बेसिक नीड्स जिसको हम हवा 
पानी और अनाज कहते हैं और इसके मामले में वो हमसे कई गुना ज्यादा बेटर है अब हम लोगों ने उसको डेवलपमेंट शब्द ही यूज नहीं किया जितनी ज्यादा ग्रीनरी आपके आजू बाजू में हो उतना ज्यादा हम आपको डेवलप समझेंगे ये पहला यूज कीजिएगा तब पता चलेगा कि कौन डेवलप है हम लोग है या वो लोग है तो हम लोग मैड है ना हम लोग बोल रहे हैं कि चकाचौंध रस्ते और ये सारा होना जो है ये डेवलपमेंट है रोड होना गलत नहीं है रोड भी बनाइएगा मगर उसके आजू बाजू में जितना जहां स्पेसेस मिलता है वहां ग्रीनरी बनाइएगा ना वो भी तो कर सकते हैं मगर वो ना करके हम सिर्फ ये कर रहे हैं ये गलत है वो कहते हैं कि हमें ये रास्ते नहीं चाहिए इट्स नॉट नीड हमको आवश्यकता नहीं है हमको जो है ज्यादा से ज्यादा पेड़ चाहिए इसलिए उनके भगवान भी देखिएगा देवताओं को देखिएगा वो सारे उस कुदरत के इसमें हम देख सकते हैं हमारे यहाँ भी तो कई ट्रेडिशन है हम नारली पूर्णिमा को जो है नारियल समुन्द्र में अर्पण करके जो है उसका वंदन करते हैं क्योंकि हमारा आ, सारा सी रूट जो है उससे हमारा व्यापार चलता है या हमारी नदियों को हम देवता मानते हैं तो इसको समझिएगा और ये सारा जो भी लिखे हुए है ना किताबें मैक्सिमम लिटरेचर जो भी हमें प्राप्त होता है इट्स अ टोटली मैडनेस क्योंकि हमारी बेसिक नीड्स को फुलफिल करने वाली जो भी बातें होंगी वो ज्यादा रिचनेस होगा उसके उल्टा जो चल रहे हैं वो जो भी रहेगा वो चाहे गाड़ियां रहे या चकाचौंध रस्ते रहे या जो भी रहेगा ऐसा टोटली मैडनेस ऐसा मैं समझता हूँ नहीं तो आज देख रहे हैं कोरोना के इसमें सबसे ज्यादा लोग मरे ऑक्सीजन के अभाव से जो कि पृथ्वी तल पर सबसे ज्यादा है पृथ्वी पर सबसे ज्यादा हिस्सा पानी का है बटल बंद पानी बेचा जा रहा है आ, अनाज के बारे में भी देखिएगा सबसे ज्यादा फूड इनसिक्योरिटी है हम लोग जो खाने की जो बात कर रहे हैं हमारे पास तो खैर फिर भी जो पैसे कमाने वाले लोग हैं ठीक है मगर जिनके पास लेस जिसको हम कह रहे हैं उनके पास तो खाने की भी दुविधा है मगर इससे भैया जंगल में चले जाइए उन लोगों को ना खाने की चिंता है ना ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन के अभाव में एक भी आदिवासी मरा ये मैंने नहीं पढ़ा है क्षमा करना मैं जलगांव जिले में उस समय रहता था हर न्यूज को बहुत बारीकी से मैंने देखा हमारे कलेक्टर अभिजीत जी जो थे उनसे मैंने रिपोर्ट मंगाए थे कि कितने ट्राइबल लोग ऑक्सीजन के अभाव में मरे उसके बारे में कुछ दीजिए नंदुरबार डिस्ट्रिक्ट में नवापुर तालुका हो हमारे जलगांव में चोपड़ा तालुका हो एक भी ट्राइबल जो है ऑक्सीजन के अभाव में नहीं मरा है मगर बाकी हम जो लोग है कई सारे लोग हजारों की तादाद में यहाँ तक कि हमारे एम भी उस समय हमारे जो एम वो लोग भी ऑक्सीजन के अभाव में मरे है तो इन बातों को हमें समझना है और हमारे दिमाग में भारतीय संस्कृति का मूल ढांचा जो है उसको समझने की बहुत आवश्यकता है यस किसी ने हैंड रेज किया था कुछ पूछना है यस सर दिस इज रूमा हेलो यस यस एक्चुअली वी गेट टू नो दैट दे फ्लरिश बिकॉज ऑफ आइसोलेशन दैट इज लैक ऑफ इंटरेक्शन विद अदर वर्ड बट दिस इज इयर्स बिफोर ये सिचुएशन था अभी क्या लाइक like, रहेगा कि अभी लोगों को ऐसा नहीं लगता है कि लोगों को ज्यादा अवेयर करना चाहिए और उनको क्लोजली उनके कल्चर को समझना चाहिए ताकि जहाँ पे कम से कम इंटरवेंशन हो और जहाँ सपोर्ट चाहिए वहाँ पे सपोर्ट मिले उन्हें लाइक like, आइसोलेशन में अब क्या उनको छोड़ना सही रहेगा लाइक like, उनके प्रोग्रेस के लिए वो एक क्वेश्चन था जस्ट जी फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज दैट आपने जो पहला ही जो यूज किया Isolation tha, means not uh, they are not connected with the other culture. Yeah, yeah. Easily in in Maharashtra also, if you just visit the Ratnagiri district, Chipluun, if you see there the petroglyphs. So, लगभग 40,000 हजार वर्ष पूर्व भी हमारा और Mesopotamian culture का क्या relations था, Syrian cultures का क्या ये था, वो सारे pictures हमें प्राप्त होते हैं. Tribal में भी, folk में भी ये लोग निरंतर विचरण करते थे, ये घूमते रहते थे. और इनका एक दूजे के संस्कृति के साथ संबंध था है इसके आज भी कई सारे सैकड़ों प्रमाण हमारे पास मौजूद है बट इट मीन्स नॉट इसका मतलब ये नहीं हम उनको आइसोलेशन में छोड़ना आइसोलेटेड कोई नहीं है आइसोलेटेड के बजाय हम जो बात कर रहे हैं वो है कि नेचर के खिलाफ जाकर जो भी कर रहे हैं उसको डेवलपमेंट समझना ये गलत है इसको हमें समझना है फोक कल्चर से और फोक से ट्राइबल से जीवन से हमको जो समझना है द रिचनेस इज दैट द हार्मनी संस्कृतियों के बीच में आदान प्रदान भी है मगर उसके साथ साथ कुदरत को भी उन्होंने जो है वो पक्का अपने साथ बॉन्डिंग करके रखा हुआ है तो ये हमको समझना है दे आर नॉट आइसोलेटेड रियली बिकॉज आप जाइएगा मैंने आदिवासी अनोखे विश्व मराठी में एक बहुत सुंदर किताब है डॉक्टर निरंजन घाटे जी ने लिखी हुई है तो उसमें अगर आप देखेंगे तो कैसे इन सारे 
ट्राइबल्स का सारे फोक्स का कैसे एक दूजे के साथ संबंध था उसके बारे में ही वो पूरी किताब है इट्स नॉट ट्रांसलेटेड इन हिंदी और इंग्लिश कोई अगर उसको करेंगे तो अच्छा होगा मराठी से हिंदी में आई विल बी ऑल्सो ट्राई बिकॉज इसके पहले मैंने दो तीन सॉरी तीन मराठी किताबें अंग्रेजी में अनुवाद करके प्रकाशित की है तो वन इज ऑफ अ ट्राइबल ऑफिसर आई आर एस ऑफिसर अजय खरडे जी की किताब अजय नाम से ही थी तो उसको हमने ट्रांसलेट किया था तो शायद ये हो सकता है इसकी वजह से हमको कल्चर्स का संस्कृतियों का आदान प्रदान आवश्यक है हम आइसोलेटेड नहीं है मगर आइसोलेट हम जिस तरह से इतना कह रहे ना कि ये शब्द यूज किए हैं बड़े शहर अगर आप हरप्पा मोहनजोदारो में भी अगर देखेंगे तो नुकसान उनका ज्यादा हुआ है जो ज्यादा से ज्यादा सेंट्रलाइज हुए है आप अमेरिका जैसे देशों में आज देखिए डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन के इसमें ज्यादा लोग चल रहे हैं हमें भी देखिए भारत में भी धीरे धीरे आ रहा है दिल्ली में नौकरी करने वाले लोग रिटायरमेंट के बाद अपने पंजाब या हरियाणा हरियाणा आजू बाजू के जाओ गांव है वहां जाकर वो बसना चाहते हैं हमारे यहाँ महाराष्ट्र में भी मुंबई जैसे शहरों में पुणा जैसे शहरों में जो लोग रहते हैं वो समझते है कि नहीं रिटायरमेंट के बाद आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट हम अपने गाँव में जाकर रहेंगे सो इसका कारण क्या है बिकॉज वी नीड द पीस हमको शांति चाहिए सो दिस पीस विच इज कॉल्ड एज रियली आइसोलाइजेशन तो हमको ये समझना है वर्ड्स को हम कैसे करते हैं उसका मीनिंग हम कैसे समझते हैं उसके अनुसार ये सारी जो है इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ वर्ड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यस थैंक यू या रश्मि जी कुछ कहना चाहते हैं और बिफोर हम्बल रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल प्लीज रेडी फॉर टू ऑन यूर वीडियो I request to all the participants, please uh, ready for to on your video because we need to take one photograph with uh, uh, Mandal ji. Uh, yeah, please, Rashmi ji. सर uh, मुझे एक uh, कहना है कि uh, uh, मैं बॉम्बे uh, में रहती हूँ एंड इन मुंबई दिस इज कॉल्ड एस गोरेगा विच यू मस्ट बी नोइंग तो वहां पे वेर आई बी स्टे लाइक इन गोरेगा वहां पे सबसे बड़ा आर एम एल कॉलोनी का जंगल है लाइक इट्स द ओनली जंगल अमिट द मोस्ट मतलब अर्बन पॉपुलेशन में इतना बड़ा जंगल मतलब पूरे वर्ल्ड में नहीं होगा लाइक like, हमारे यहाँ पे देर आर फोर टू फाइव लेपर्ड्स लाइक उनका तो नॉर्मल साइटिंग्स बिकॉज अगर आर ए कॉलोनी का अगर आप देखने जाओगे तो वहां पे पूरी मतलब जंगल है और उसके आजू बाजू में पूरे बड़े बड़े टावर्स है चालीस चालीस पचास पचास माले के जिसके एक एक फ्लैट की कॉस्ट फोर टू फाइव करोर से स्टार्ट होती है और वही पे ट्राइबल आदिवासी लाइक काटकरी और जो वारली और वारली दुबड़ी जो बोलते हैं वो कम्युनिटी के रहते हैं और वहां पे दे ऑर्गेनाइज ये ट्राइबल लंच वगैरह भी कुछ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अरेंज करती है तो मैंने खुद ने भी वहां पे जाकर एक बार एक्सपीरियंस किया था तो वहां पर वो लोग फ्लावर्स का जो अपने हिबिस्कस के फ्लावर्स होते हैं उसकी सब्जी बनाते हैं फिर वो राइस की रोटी बनाते हैं एंड दे वर सेलिंग ऑल दो वारली लोगों की जो पेंटिंग्स है फिर जो कुछ उनके बैम्बू के आर्टिकल्स वगैरह भी वो लोग सेल करते थे और वो लोग अभी भी मतलब जे दे ग्रो देअर ओन वेजिटेबल्स और एवरी मॉर्निंग आठ बजे और शाम को दो से लेकर पांच बजे तक वो लोग अपने जो उगाए हुए मतलब सब सब्जियां फ्रूट्स वगैरह वो लोग आरे कॉलोनी में बेचते हैं और वो खरीदने के लिए लोग बड़ी बड़ी गाड़ियां लेकर वहां पे आते हैं लाइक पीपल आजू बाजू थाना वाना से भी लेकर लोग आके वहां पे खरीदते हैं सो लाइक दे स्टिल लिव वहां पे तो अभी कुछ सात आठ साल पहले दे गॉट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड एवरीथिंग जब ये एक वारली उनके ही ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी का एक अभी आप जो कह रहे हैं मगर आरे का नॉट ओनली इन आरे इन मुंबई बट इन ऑल ओवर दी इंडिया और एब्रॉड इंडिया ऑल्सो वो लोग अपनी जरूरतों को खुद पूरा कर लेते हैं फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट सेकंड थिंग व्हाई बिकॉज देयर नीड्स आर वेरी लेस जरूरतें जो है बहुत कम है तीसरा है जरूरत से ज्यादा होने पर अभी वो सेल कर रहे हैं बट बिफोर ऑफ दिस सेल नाम की कोई चीज थी नहीं वो लोग देते थे ऐसे ही देते थे क्योंकि भोजन बेचना ये गुना ही था किसी समय में मगर आज की तारीख में आप देख रहे हैं आरे शेड जैसे आरे का जो ये सारा चल रहा है जैसे कंपटीशन सी लगे हुए नष्ट करने में नॉट ओनली आ रहे उधर में जब जाता हूँ ठाकुर कॉलेज और वो सारा महात्मा कॉलेज वगैरह जो है उससे आगे जब जाता हूँ अग्री समाज के जो सारी लैंड्स है उस तरह भी पूरा वो दूसरा एयरपोर्ट बनाने के नाम पे वो सारा नष्ट कर दिया गया तो डेवलपमेंट में जो कह रहा हूँ ना रस्ते बनाइए एयरपोर्ट बनाइए जो बनाना है बनाइए मगर उसके साथ साथ ग्रीनरी को भी सब लोग मिलकर के 
कोई एक कम्युनिटी नहीं सब लोग मिलकर के समझे सबसे पहला ऑक्सीजन की आवश्यकता है जब सब लोग मिलकर के ये करेंगे तब पॉसिबल होगा ट्राइबल से फोकस सीखने की यही सबसे बड़ी आवश्यकता है वो लोग गलत नहीं है हम लोग गलत है क्योंकि हम लोग उसको नष्ट करना ही सबसे बड़ा ये समझ रहे अब धीरे धीरे इसके परिणाम कोरोना जैसे काल में हमको समझ में आए अदरवाइज वो कहना भी बड़ा मुश्किल होता था पहले तो लोग उपवास उड़ाते थे 2012 में जब मैंने व्याख्यान दिया था उसके बाद 2019 में जब मैं अमेरिका में था तो जाने के बाद न्यू जर्सी को गार्डन स्टेट कहा जाता है जैसे हमारे यहाँ रास्ते में कभी कभी देखते है कि कुछ छोटे छोटे कीड़े या जो बारिश के दिनों में गूगल गाय है तो जो गाड़ी के नीचे कुचल दिए जाते हैं कई बार कुत्ते मर जाते हैं वैसे हिरन वहां पे न्यू जर्सी में कई रास्ते में हिरन मरे पड़े हुए मिलते हैं यानी हमको इतना तो भी कॉमन सेंस होना चाहिए कि हम जब जंगल से जा रहे हैं तो हमारा स्पीड कितना रखना है कोई प्राणी रास्ता अगर ये कर रहा है तो क्या उसको हम कुचल देंगे अगर हम वो गाना भी है बहुत अच्छा एक हिंदी फिल्म में सॉन्ग भी है कोई अगर प्राणी अगर इंसान को मारे तो उसको वैशी कहते हैं अगर इंसान प्राणियों को मारे तो उसको कोई ये नहीं कह रहा है सो लाइक दैट जब तक हम इसको बैलेंसिंग करके नहीं रखेंगे तब तक जो होगा ये इंसिडेंट्स होते रहेंगे आज का ये सेशन रखने का उद्देश्य वो था कि द ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस कल्चर इसको समझे और ये ब्यूटी इसका रूट्स क्या है उसको समझे और हमारे जीवन में हम उसको लाने का प्रयास करें ये आज के इस सेशन का उद्देश्य था इसके बाद भी हो सकता है कई सारे सवाल हो सकते हैं क्योंकि मुझे एक नहीं सवाल पूछा था तो क्या आप जंगल के सारे प्राणियों को ऐसे ही रखेंगे मारेंगे नहीं तो तो फिर वो तो वो आके हमें मारेंगे ना तब क्या करेंगे ऐसा भी सवाल पूछा था मॉस्किटोज का उदाहरण दिए थे उन्होंने उन्होंने कहा घर में बहुत मॉस्किटोज हो जाएंगे तो क्या ऐसे ही रखेंगे क्या भाई खुद को जीवित रखने के लिए उन्होंने भी प्रयास किए थे ट्राइबल में अग्नि का शोध जब आया तो अग्नि की खोज सिर्फ खाना पकाने के लिए नहीं की गई जंगल के जो प्राणी जो हमारे ऊपर अटैक करते हैं उनको दूर रखने के लिए भी किया है सो so, इंसान के पास इतना दिमाग तो है नॉट ओनली इंसान बल्कि सारे प्राणियों को इतना दिमाग तो है कि वो हम हमारे ऊपर जो भी अटैक होता है उससे हम कैसे बच सकते हैं कुदरत ने इतनी सोच सबको दी है मगर इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि हम खुद को सेफ रखने के लिए सबको कुचल दे तब जाकर के मुश्किलें खड़ी होती है बिकॉज इट्स अ लाइफ साइकिल जीव चक्र में कहीं भी एक हिस्सा अगर टूट जाता है तो सारा चेन ब्रेकअप होता है तो ये ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी से फोक से हमको समझना है इतना ही हमारा कहना है इफ इट्स ओके देन वी विल यस अगेन कुछ लोग इशरत जी शायद उनका ऑडियो नहीं वीडियो नहीं हो सकता है इफिता जी का भी वीडियो ऑन नहीं है बाकी सभी का है हाँ यस ओके सो हम्बली थैंकफुल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड वंस अगेन हम्बली थैंकफुल टू मुंडल जी कल्चर के बारे में भी उन्होंने बताया उनका अपना अनुभव उन्होंने शेयर किया उनका म्यूजियम का एक्सपर्टीज भी उतना ही अच्छा है और दूसरा दूसरी बात है अपने यूनिवर्सिटी में बच्चों को ये सारी बातें सीखने को मिले इसके लिए वो बहुत ही अग्रेसिव रहती है कि नहीं हमारे बच्चों को हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी के बच्चों को भी ये मिलना चाहिए लास्ट टाइम उन्होंने बहुत फोर्स करके जबकि अभी आज जो मेरा सिचुएशन है हेल्थ का जो सिचुएशन है उस समय बहुत ही क्रिटिकल था फिर भी उन्होंने बताया कि जो भी होगा मगर समय दीजिए हमारे बच्चों के लिए इससे मैं बाहर आ सका नहीं तो उस समय मेरी हेल्थ ऐसी थी दो महीने में टोटली बेड पर था मैं ऐसा समझता था कि शायद मैं उठ नहीं पाऊंगा मगर उनकी वजह से सेवन टेन डेज कंटिन्यूस लेक्चर थे और वो मुझे तैयारी भी करनी होती थी तो वो पढ़ाई के लिए मैं उठता था और इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक था म्यूजियम्स कि उसके बजाय हम जिंदा नहीं रह सकते यानी ये हमारे लिए एनर्जेटिक टॉपिक है सो हम बल थैंकफुल टू अगेन मुंडल जी विथ अस यर एंड इन फ्यूचर ऑल्सो Uh, we expect uh, that uh, you will be with us thank humbly you thankful and humbly thankful to all the participants session ke liye likhiyega thank you ma'am thank you thank you, thank you so much yes, sir any assignment yes assignment is same today's session notes you need to uh, share it okay and i will share some notes some uh, uh, articles research papers and books so please read it please go through it and if any questions then most welcome anytime